Hi, my name is Ross Langston and I work here at Windward Community College where I teach anatomy and physiology. And we're going to talk today about how we can use green screen technology in order to enhance student learning in our own online laboratory sections. So you've probably heard about green screens before. They have them at the weather station where they point out the weather. Uh, they also use them in movie productions. And the way that they work is actually relatively simple. We film some people in front of a green screen and then we digitally go in and pull out the green coloration. We can then just as simply replace that green coloration with another video or picture file of our choosing. So here you can see that we've replaced our green screen with an image of the sky and the clouds. And you can see that the only thing that really gets replaced is anything that's green, which is the green screen up here, and ironically, a little bit of the chalkboard, which is also green. So how can we use this in our classrooms in order to enhance student learning? Well, one way you can use it is to put yourself in a unique background. For example, if you're stuck at home, you can put yourself in a real laboratory. You can also introduce fun little graphics like a DNA molecule or COVID virus or something like that. And of course, you can always put yourself in a dystopian wasteland. And if you like, you can even introduce a really annoyed T-Rex. <laughs> So the thing that I've used it most for in the online environment is to help teach anatomical structures as part of our anatomy labs. So like most of you that teach anatomy, you usually probably have your students learn, let's say, 50 or 60 anatomical structures per each lab. And when we have them come in, we give them a list of the terms they're responsible for knowing, and then we're there to help point those things out on our anatomical models. We even usually have a five or 10 minute lecture at the beginning of lab where we point out the essential anatomy. That becomes very hard in an online environment where we cannot point. And so this is what the live green screen gives you, the ability to point. For example, here we have a female reproductive tract and we can point out the uterus, which is up here. We can point out uh, the urinary bladder and urethra. We can point out the vagina, etc. So just having the ability to point uh, makes it a lot easier for the students to learn the structures that we want them to know. And we also give them copies of all the digital images as a handout, and we put numbers on there so they can go through there and number the structures as they're learning their identity. So in addition to doing this kind of like large screen thing, we can also do something that's more of a hybrid sort of traditional classroom if you want to do your lectures this way. Uh, so this is a way where you just have an image of a classroom and then you have your PowerPoint file right there and you can just scroll through that and teach like you would normally teach in a classroom. I don't know if it enhances student learning that much, but it's a little bit more interesting to look at than a PowerPoint that's narrated and maybe doesn't have somebody's face on it. So if this type of technology interests you, uh, just pay attention for the next 10 to 12 minutes and we're going to talk about how to introduce this and roll it out in your own virtual classroom. So this lecture basically has three parts. The first part we'll talk about where to buy the green screen uh, and where to get the camera, etc. The second part we'll talk about uh, calibrating the green screen and getting it ready. And the third part we'll talk a little bit about how to actually uh, block the scenes and film your own green screen lectures. Okay, now let's talk about what materials you're going to need to buy in order to set up your own green screen uh, studio. So first of all, you do need the green screen itself and you can purchase those on Amazon. There's lots and lots of different versions. They're probably all fine as long as they're green and the stands are pretty sturdy. Um, I would say you probably need to get something that's about 10 feet wide. I got something narrower at first and had to go back and, and get a wider screen. So a frame that can handle a 10 foot screen. Uh, and if you want, you can get the illuminators as well. Uh, but if you have really great lighting, you might be able to get away without them. Uh, and also, if you want to be really, really cheap, you can probably just buy the screen itself for $30 or $40 and tack it up on a wall. Okay, next let's talk about cameras. Uh, you already have a camera on your laptop, I know, but for whatever reason, the onboard uh, cameras don't seem to be near the quality as the ones that are external. And also having an external camera allows you to move that camera around to really position it uh, optimally for the green screen. Uh, so do yourself a favor, go out and get an external USB camera, something around 1080p with uh, a frame rate of at least 30 frames per second. So just to give you an idea, I'm shooting right here on a Logitech Brio, which is an external camera, which is pretty good. Uh, and now I'm going to add on my on onboard camera. Okay, so you can see on the left hand side, that's the onboard camera and it's kind of grainy. It's also pretty dark. The external cameras seem to have really good uh, low light uh, reduction to be able to deal with that. And the further away from the camera you get, the better uh, they come out in comparison to the onboard camera. So do get yourself a USB external camera, if at all possible. 
Okay, finally, let's talk about uh, one other essential piece of equipment, and that is the microphone. Again, if you're standing further and a couple feet away from your laptop, your onboard microphone is not going to be very good, nor is the one on the camera, actually. So I would recommend getting some kind of external microphone. Uh, this is the Mono Elf. It's a USB microphone. It costs 20 bucks, and it's been great. It's the one that I've been using for several months now. Uh, the only caveat here is if you're going to be standing further than four or five feet away, you might need an extension cord. So you might need to order one of those or go on down to media and see if they can uh, loan one to you. So those are the three pieces of equipment. Uh, all in all, it's probably going to cost you around $150 to $200 in order to outfit your green screen studio completely. Okay, hi, this is Ross here. Uh, before we set up our sort of virtual filming station for our AMP Labs, we need to set up our green screen. So we're going to film the process of putting up the green screen, hopefully fast forward through it so you can see that it's not that difficult. It only takes about 20 or 30 minutes. So here I go. Okay, now we've got our green screen set up and we're almost ready to calibrate our software. So we've got our camera here, it's directed to the green screen. We've got our computer that's going to be running the OBS software to record the presentation. And it's also helpful to have an external monitor, uh, particularly if your laptop monitor is kind of on the small side. The reason is, is as you're up there uh, in front of the green screen pointing at things, uh, you have to watch a monitor to see actually where you're pointing. And obviously it's easier to have a bigger monitor than a smaller one but it's not essential. Uh, last but not least, it's helpful at this point if you can have somebody stand in front of the green screen while you do the calibrations. Uh, it's not good just to calibrate on the green itself. Uh, you want to be able to see uh, what somebody looks like in front of that to do color corrections and things like that. So since I have no one else to help me out, I've got Edgar, our anatomy model today, so he's going to be our calibration subject. And this is the web page where you can download OBS Studio for either Mac or Windows. And this is free software and it's really great for either broadcasting, uh, for streaming, or for recording, which is what we're going to do today. So we've already got it installed on our system, and here's what it looks like. Uh, basically, in OBS, you're going to work from left to right. The first thing you're going to do is create a scene, and that scene will be populated with sources. So our first scene will be a calibrated camera. Say OK. So all this scene is going to contain is our camera once it's been calibrated. And so we click under Sources, hit Plus to add. We add a video capture device and say OK. And this one's going to be the Logitech Brio. That's correct. But I'm going to change the default resolution to custom because I know it has a better resolution than what it's showing. So the Logitech Brio actually can go up to 4K, but I'm going to choose uh, 1080 on there and hit OK. And that looks good. This would be the point where I might want to scoot my tripod around or get it closer or further away. But honestly, as long as it's centered, it's fine. We can do the cropping here in just a second. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to click on the capture device too and do two transformations. The first transformation is just going to flip it horizontally. And the reason for that is that uh, when you're up there and you lift up your right arm and you look at the screen, it's going to look like your left arm is moving. So that's going to sort of puts you a little bit cattywampus. So this uh, horizontal transformation uh, corrects for that. We're going to add another transformation. Right click again and we go up to uh, transform, edit transform, and now we're going to crop out the sides that aren't green screen. So crop left, let's try 200, not quite, let's say 250. That looks good. Right, let's say 200, nope, not even need to do 200, looks perfect. Okay, and just look, click off the screen there, and make sure that everything looks right. Okay, that looks good. So now what we want to do is add our chroma key filter. So we right click on our source, and we add filters. And the filter here is chroma key. And chroma key removes the green, hit OK, 
and bam, there it is. It's perfect. OBS does a great job at this. Now, if you saw some hot spots coming through or areas where there was something on the screen that was coming through, um, that you could sit there and adjust the similarity. Uh, right now it's at 400. If I put it up a little too high, it's going to start to dissolve uh, my little muscle stand-in dude, Edgar. And so I'm going to put it back down near 400. But this is basically what you would adjust if you saw there was a problem. You could also adjust the lights on the screen to remove any dead, uh, dead spaces or anything like that. The next thing I'm going to do is add a color correction and say OK. And I'm just going to drag the gamma down a little bit to bring me back my reds. And I'm going to hit close. OK, that's great. So we've got our muscle guy in there, Edgar. And I can move him around. And I'll do that in just a second. OK, now we're going to add our second scene. And this scene will be a lab scene. Let's say, OK. Actually, we're going to do a DNA scene. Okay, let's say, there you go. So this will have that special DNA background. But before I do that, I'm going to add Edgar back as a scene. And he was the calibrated camera. Okay, so there he is. Next, I'm going to add a media source. And this media source is going to be um, that DNA background I showed you earlier. So I just go up to there, look in Documents. And I've got some video backgrounds here that you can download for free. So DNA was the background. And I'm just going to hit Loop because I know it's a short video. So this will just allow it to loop continuously. There it is. It's a pretty cool looking video. Now, our muscle dude, Edgar, has disappeared. So we just want to move the calibrated camera in front of the media source so that has priority. And again, I can see that he's maybe not in the right place for this particular slide. So I'm just going to move him right there. Remember, he's just a stand-in. Uh, we're not actually going to use him in the presentation. Next, we're going to create a, another scene. And this one is going to be our lab scene. OK. And we hit OK. And then we're going to add uh, our uh, camera back. So that'll add Edgar back in there. So we add in calibrated camera. And now we're going to add in an image. Okay, browse, our documents, and we have picture backgrounds in here. And so we're just going to add a laboratory in there. I like this one right there. Okay, that looks perfect. And again, Edgar's disappeared because the image is in front of him. So I'm just going to move that back up. And now Edgar is sitting there in the lab. Uh, probably should be wearing some clothes. Okay, next, our final scene here is going to be uh, a scene in a virtual classroom. Now, again, I want to add Edgar back first. I want to add back my scene with my camera. So I had add and add the camera scene. Now I want to add an image. And this image will be a virtual classroom, which will also have a slideshow going on. So add the virtual classroom. Looks good. And I drag that out by the corners. Fine. And now I want to add one more item to this list. I want to add a image slideshow. And I say OK. And then I go down here and I click on Plus, Add Files, and go back to Documents. And these slideshows are basically have been created in PowerPoint. And I just exported those PowerPoint slides uh, as, um, as actual PNG files. So I hit Open. OK. Now, so there they are. And they're just going to play sort of at a you know, random interval which I don't want that. I want to be able to control when they play and go to the next slide. So for slide mode, I'm going to choose manual, hotkeys. Okay. And I'm going to shrink this down to make it in front of the screen. So that looks pretty good. I can mess around with that, move it up a little bit. Oh, okay. Um, and now I want to move Edgar up the front, right? Because that just looks better that way. And now I want to go to the settings to do the hotkeys for that. So settings, hotkeys, and I'm going to scroll down until I find image slideshow. And I have a little digital presenter just that I use for PowerPoint. And so I can click on next slide and I'm going to do the up button. And previous slide, I'm going to do the down button. So now I can stand up there with my digital presenter and switch the slides in my virtual presentation. Okay, 
So we've got our three scenes here. We're doing really well. We're almost ready to go. The next thing you would want to check and make sure your microphone is on, that it's recording, that you're seeing uh, you know, the audio mixer on. Now I'm using it for another application currently, so that's why you don't see it. But you can toggle those on or off just by clicking on the, uh, the red microphone thing there. So everything else is turned on, but this one happens to be turned off. Okay, our fades in between scenes is around 250 milliseconds, that's fine. The last thing you want to check on there is make sure the output is what you want it to be. So you can see the parameters there. The big thing is take a look at the recording quality uh, and then the recording format. This one's coming out as MKV, and that's a weird file, but that's fine for the editing software that I use. But if you're using Premiere Pro or something else, you're going to choose something else like an MP4. Okay, so we just hit OK, and we are ready to go. Okay, now that I've got all my scenes blocked up, I'm ready to start recording. So I go on the right-hand side, and I can hit Start Streaming if I wanted to stream to Twitch or something like that. But I'm going to record today, so I just hit Start Recording. Okay, and it's now recording. The last thing I want to do is move my cursor back to our scenes and start on the first scene because that's going to let me toggle through those scenes uh, as uh, using my remote presenter. So I now want to go up here and kick off Edgar because I'm going to do the live presentation now, right? Or you. And so thank you for your help today, Edgar. You've been great. And then you just want to check and see where the dead spots are. It's like my arm disappears this way, but that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go on to the next scene. Okay, which was the laboratory. That looks good too, is what it's supposed to be. And go to our final scene, okay, which was that virtual classroom. And I should be able to point at the slides and say, you know, this is a corpus luteum, etc., and toggle through there. So that all looks fine. So given, you know, 30 minutes calibrating your software and pulling in some decent images uh, and given a little bit of practice switching scenes, you can make very professional presentations in just a few minutes uh, once you get the hang of it. Now, what happens to your video after you stop recording? Well, let's do that. We're going to go down here and hit stop recording. And where does the video go? So if you are on a PC, just search for videos. And you can see that all of that footage is saved right here under videos. And it's saved by the date and the time. So I'm not sure which one's the most recent one. But they're all right there. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and just paste, post that up to YouTube. Or if you want to edit it, you can you know, edit it in any type of video editor. In any case, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. And if you have any further questions about green screen and teaching, you can drop me an email at langston at hawaii.edu. Thanks.